Hey everyone, Brett Kelly here for another Tuesday Tech Tip at 45 Drives. Um, so this week, and I guess next week too, because I'm going to intro two of them. We're going to, we, we, we've had a growing desire of people to take our Seth Ansible playbooks, the ones I was mentioning last week, and take them out for a spin before they get our hardware. Uh, a to, I don't know, learn the process, just learn something new. Um, they want to show off uh, that the solution can work to their boss, or maybe just to figure out if it's going to work for their end application. So um, we wanted to, I don't know, make it easy for everyone to, to pull down our playbooks and give them a run through on a virtual environment. So they can do it on your desktop computer, maybe a server, hypervisor, whatever. Um, so we're going to do this in two parts. Part one, I'm going to go through the kind of the intro to Ansible. The, in other words, the minimum amount of things you need to know about Ansible to operate our playbooks. Um, then part two, we're going to take what we learned this week, and next week we're going to pull down the playbooks, we're going to spin up a little virtual environment, and I'm going to kind of go through which parts of um, the playbooks that you would need to run in your virtual environment to get a working Ceph cluster. Because remember what I said, a lot of the quality of life improvements that we've put in it is built for our hardware. So um, I'll kind of, I don't know, clear the way and make it clear on, yep, you're going to want to do this in virtual environment, yep, and this is for when you buy the servers later. So without further ado, let's go over to my desk, we'll do a screen cap, and we're going to go over the intro to Ansible. What you need to know to run some playbooks. All right, everyone, so wake, welcome to uh, part one of our Ansible kind of basics demo. So really the tagline of this one is, this is the minimum you're going to need to know to run some playbooks. Um, if you go look up Ansible or even uh, take a look at the basics and stuff like that, you might get a little scared away because remember what Ansible is. It is an automation framework. It's a huge tool set that sysadmin and developers can build to deploy things. But there's two paths to consider here. There's creating Ansible playbooks, and then there's just using Ansible playbooks. So if someone's kind of curated and built a set of playbooks and, and tasks um, that do a specific task, you don't need to be an expert in Ansible. You just need to know some basic stuff that I'm going to cover now. So uh, without further ado, let's just get into it. So we're going to start first, uh, take a look at this photo I have here. So this is uh, my little test environment I have. I have three or four virtual machines. One of them is going to be my Ansible admin node. And then the other three are just going to be hosts that I want to do things to. Um, using a Ceph uh, example, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stay very general for this, but we'll just a little bit. So for Ceph, this would be our three OSDs or anything. So when we go next week, um, we'll be using the same setup as this. We'll just be deploying a Ceph cluster. But this week, we're going to stay pretty general. So. I also really want to note that although I have a fourth node that it will be, I'll be running my Ansible commands from, there is no reason that one of these three hosts can't be the Ansible node. That's a lot of people do. This is very common. But for this setup here, I just want to show the separate roles, right? Okay. So let's start with number one here. Let's just kind of define some basic Ansible terms. So uh, I've said a lot of them already. So let's let's. Uh, Describe them. Okay, so the admin node. So that's that's this Ansible admin node here. That's this um, terminal screen that we're looking in the top corner. Or in Ansible terms, is the control node. What this does is this is the the server that's that's where Ansible is installed. That's where all the commands are being run from. So, um, like I said before, I've got my fourth VM here that's acting like that. But one of the uh, members could also be the Ansible admin node. So when I say the admin node, it's the one issuing the Ansible commands. It issues these commands over SSH, and that's how it communicates with each of its managed nodes or hosts, which leads me to my next term. Um, managed nodes or hosts are the servers or virtual machines or whatever that we want to deploy a cluster to or run tasks on or run these playbooks on. So you can think of hosts as host one, two, and three here. In my case, these are three virtual machines I have running. It could be a physical server, whatever. Okay, the next term is groups. 
and a group is exactly that. It's a group of similar hosts. So I can run a set of tasks or a playbook, not just on one specific host, but on a group of hosts. Anyway, so that's another term that will come up. Hosts are managed and grouped into groups based on the role that they are going to perform. Next, tasks. Tasks is another word. Uh, a task is a ad hoc, one-off command that is an action that runs on a single host, a group, or a set of groups. And then a playbook is a series of these tasks that are also applied to a group or a host. So you can think of, when I say a playbook, it is a curated set of commands that will run on a bunch of servers to get a bunch of work done. Okay, so those are the basic Ansible terms. You'll hear me use any of those uh, five words or their synonyms or uh, whatever you want to call them, other names, as we move through this. So with that out of the way, let's get started. We're going to do the first thing. Um, we want to allow us to be able to communicate from our, you know what, I'm going to keep this up so we can always have a look on it. Uh, we want to be able to communicate from our admin node to all the other hosts. So to do that, we have to generate uh, an SSH key. Now I've done this already, but I'm just going to do this process again so we all see. So you would run SSH key gen on your master node or your admin node. Um, like it's saying it already exists, I don't want to overwrite. In your case, it'll ask a couple questions. Just keep saying yes. Okay, so when you've done that, you want to copy the key to your other three hosts. So I've got them called host one, two, and three, but I've got a different host name. So I'm going to copy it to one. And again, it's yelling at me, these are already here. But in your case, it'll prompt you to ask password. You put the password in, and then it's there. And then what happens if I remote into one of them? It just lets me in without a password. Now, the Ansible admin node can communicate with each of these. Okay. Um, now, let's create an inventory file. So, what is an inventory file? Or, in other words, a host file. Well, let me make an Ansible demo directory to work out of. Oh, and I've made it already. Perfect. Sorry. CD Ansible demo. So we're working with a blank directory right now. So let's make a file called hosts. And in this host file, this is our inventory file. So you can think of this as the, this is the, the manifest of all our host files, and or of all our, our servers, our hosts, our nodes. This is how the Ansible node knows who we're talking about when we tell it to run on a task. So to define that, we'll call the first one group one. And in group one, we'll put OSD one, We'll put OSD, VOSD2. And then for the next one, let's put group 2, and we'll call it VOSD3. So this is how I've organized my host. It's my inventory file. I have them in uh, defined into two groups. And the kind of thinking here is the group would be the role. So like say I want these two servers to always have the same stuff deployed to them, but this third server will have a different function. So I want to put it into a different group. So this is the basics of making Ansible kind of work. It know This is how it knows who to talk to. Okay, so we're going to close this file. We can look at it one more time if we want. Okay, so we've created our inventory file. Again, this is how Ansible knows who to communicate with. So Let's run a, an, uh, an Ansible task now. Let's do an ad hoc command, as they call it. So we'll go ansible-m ping for the ping module. And we want to ping all. And what this is telling us is, well, first of all, I'm going to run it like this, and it's going to yell at me. No inventory was parsed. It didn't know what was going on because I didn't give it that Inventory file is just created, so Ansible didn't know who I was talking to. It was like, all I know about is local host. So now what I want to say is ping all, which means ping all of my hosts, which pings every group and every host in that inventory file. So if I do this, I should get a response from all three servers. And there we go. So three success, two success, one success. Perfect, that worked. So there I ran a task against my hosts organized in a group 
but instead of spe specifying the group, I ran it against all of them. But maybe I didn't want to do that. Maybe I didn't want to do all. Maybe I only wanted to see if I could get to group one. So if I, instead of all, I just say group one. Now we should only get two responses. Exactly. So we just have the first two servers, the two that we defined to be in group one. And of course it follows if I do that again, but if I do it on group two, I should only get one response. And that's how Ansible can kind of determine which tasks need to be run on which groups. And now you can further extract or abstract these tasks out and write it into a playbook. Okay, so before I dive into running a playbook, there's one more concept we have to talk about, and that's the idea of variables. So you can imagine, and um, let's talk about a Ceph cluster in this in this scenario. Um, one important part of defining your Ceph cluster is you need to say the network range all your servers are on. Well, if I went and made a bunch of playbooks and hard-coded in my network range, well, that's not going to be very helpful to everyone else. But if I abstracted that out, defined it as a variable, and then had a user input that variable, well then, everyone can use the same set of tasks and just configure it for their environment. So that's the last little piece of magic here that makes Ansible work. So I just want to do a little demo of how these variables work. There's, there's two ways to think about these variables. There's, there's host variables and there's group variables. And how it works is if it's defined as a group variable, that variable is applied to every host in that group. If it's a host variable, then it's only applied to that specific host. And host variables will always override group variables. So uh, back to the Ceph example, say you have to define how many or what devices that you want to use to create your storage cluster out of. What if host one and two have all the same disks, but host three, uh, they're in different locations, so they're, they, they got a different name. Well, in that case, um, if I defined my devices in my group virus, that would only work for one and two, but it wouldn't work for three. So I would have to do an, a separate host variable, which is just number three. Okay, so that's a bunch of words. Let's take a look at how this works. So um, I've made a variable already. It's called group virus. So this is a standard directory that you would need to make in Ansible. And in group virus, I have a file called all.yaml and group2.yaml. And the all follows just the same as we were talking about that ping command before. If I define a variable in this all file, all.yaml file, it will be applied to all groups. So I have defined a variable in here called variable one is everybody. But if I go look in my other group virus, group two, this will only be applied to the hosts in group two. Boom, variable one is group two. Okay, but what does this look like? Well, we can use a command called Ansible Inventory, and I need to tell it, give it my manifest file so it knows who I'm talking to, and then I want to take a look at the variables defined for VOSD1. Remember, VOSD1 is in group 1. So we should expect to see variable 1 equal to everybody. Great, because it was defined in all.yaml that everyone should have variable 1 defined as everybody. But... What about number three? Number three is in group two. We made a group two YAML file in group virus. That actually overrides the all YAML. And now VOSD3 sees that variable one is group two. Perfect. So that's group variables. But now let's go a little further and go into host variables. So I'm going to make a specific host virus. Um, and in this case, you would name it the exact same name as the host. And I'm going to say variable one. And I'll just say VOSD one so that we know we're running it on this one. So let me close this back out. And let me do my Ansible inventory file again. But this time, remember when I ran it up above here, the variable one for OSD one was everybody. But now that I have a host fire, defined for that same variable, it should override that one. So let's see if it did. Boom. There we go. VOSD1. Now if I do two, it should still say everybody. And then number three will say group two. So that's the last concept here, the variables. And how variables are organized very similar to the inventory. You can have group variables, you can have host-specific variables, or you can just define a overarching everyone gets this variable. All variables will be 
um, overridden by group variables, and group variables will be overridden by host variables. Okay, so let's wrap all this up by actually running a playbook. Um, so I've got one prepared here. And again, we're not going to go through the details of the playbook um, because that's not what we're here to do. We're here to just know what we need to do to run them. But all you need to know is this playbook will update, check for updates, update, and reboot each server if I tell it, uh, if I set the update variable to true. So this playbook will run on all hosts. You see that up here. But it won't actually ex execute any tasks unless I set the update variable to true. Anyway, that's all we're going to look in the playbook. So let's copy this over. We'll call it demo.yaml. I'm going to paste it in, give myself a new line, and close it. Okay, so let's say in this case that I don't want to update all servers. I only want to update the, um, the third server. So that's the server in group two. So I don't want it to touch group one and two, but I want it to do number three. So I could go in and change this playbook to be not uh, all hosts, but just group two. But I don't want to change playbooks. That's not the point. I want to be able to change a variable. So let's go into um, group two, the, the, the group var file I defined earlier. And I want to say update true. And then I want to create group var one YAML because I didn't do that yet. And I want to set update to false. So if we do our Ansible inventory command again, because I just want to check our variables very quickly. And take a look at VOSD1. Oh, sorry. That is a poor spelling by me. There we go. Um, we can see that update's false. And variable 1 is still VOSD1 because that's a holdover from our last little experiment here. Let's take a look at 2. And we see false and everybody. And then if we see three, we should see updates true. Okay. So with that said, let's run the playbook. So again, we're going to say Ansible playbook. And again, we have to give it our inventory file because it needs to know who it's operating on. And then we give it the playbook we want to run, which is this demo playbook that I did here, which will update our servers. So I'm going to cancel this pretty early because I just want to illustrate this. Okay. So you see it ran on all hosts. But because of the variable I said above, it skipped one and two, and it only ran on number three. So that's playbooks. That's all you really need to know to run a playbook. Not a whole lot. So um, let's end it with just running this playbook all the way through. All right, so there it was. There is the intro, the crash course, the, the basics that you need to know about Ansible to run playbooks. Run our playbooks, or generally any Ansible playbooks. So. Um, with that out of the way, can't wait to see you next week. We're going to take what we learned this week and we're going to spin up a Ceph cluster in a virtual environment because we want to empower you. We want you to feel like you're learning something and we want you to uh, feel in control of your storage solutions.